greatness. I am Shannon Rice Maruli and you are watching Fire Her TV, the place to be for women like you who are interested in learning from other successful women and on occasion some men regarding professional success as well as how they terminated those habits and beliefs that tried to hold them back from turning their dreams into reality. Joining us today are two dynamic realtors. Courtney Dunn and Crystal Gonzalez. These two powerhouse women know a thing or two about success in life and in business. So let's hop on over and join the conversation. All right, so thank you Courtney and Crystal for joining Fire Her TV today. And I just want to start off asking you all, how did you recognize the opportunity, especially when just a few short years ago, the housing and real estate market got kind of a bad picture painted in the media. So how did you recognize the opportunity and how have you uh, found a way to market and benefit from what mo most people saw as possibly not an opportunity? Starting with Courtney. Well, you know, I, I think first of all, it's important to really look at the real estate market and say, okay, during, especially during that time period where the media is portraying this picture of doomsday, <laughs> exactly. you know, everyone's going to go broke and, and you know, it's the way it, real estate, it's, things happen on, on the coast and then it kind of trickles in a little bit, but you know, we're so blessed in this area and, you know, Oklahoma and Texas and the, and the mid part of the region that, and we don't get as hard hit. We are, you know, we also don't experience that, you know, 200% appreciation that, you know, that other towns on the coast may also get. But we stay pretty, pretty stagnant. So, um, there are things that, um, you know, that perception people will perceive. They'll mm -hmm. see on the news, they perceive it as it's happening here. But it, you know, when you start really seeing what's going on within your own community, in your own city, it's not so much. And um, so, knowing that, Crystal and I. You know, are able to identify that it still it was a good opportunity. It still is a good time to to invest in real estate, and there's always a good time in real estate. It's just which niche, which part of real estate, which um, which area, which price range, commercial, residential. There's always ways to make money in real estate. And um, now, with that being said, we also knew that working in our own backyard. We mm -hmm. both live in North Oak Cliff, and this area, we knew it was, you know, the next great area of Dallas, mm -hmm. and that's where the growth was going to be. So we also saw that as an opportunity to really get in before things, More. you know, before everyone knew our hidden secret and our gym. <laughs> yeah. so, so that was a big part of it, um, and I'm sure you probably want to add to that. Well, you know, they. People say only death and taxes are a guarantee in life, but I have to say one other guarantee is that people need a place to live. That's true. And so uh, I didn't think the market would go anywhere anytime soon. But uh, a couple of years ago, when I was transitioning over to just you know being an independent agent and then, uh, going into a partnership, I w it sounds odd. I wanted to come in at the bottom. It was risky, but coming in at the bottom of the market didn't seem as scary because I knew that this was something I wanted to do as a career and if you could get through the hardest of the hardest times which was you know something we hadn't experienced you know what since the 80s yeah. um, I mean you can only get better from there you can only get better. and that gives you credibility on its own if you were able to sell when it was the hardest time to sell mm -hmm. And you were able to get those transactions, you know, pushed through, and you're able to get people into their homes and get them financing. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier when you're doing it during this time when the market's going yeah. up. Yeah. So, and it's all cyclical, you know. I mean, it's that's just it. You guys are reminding me of a story I heard by I believe is one of your favorite people, uh, mm -hmm. Barbara Popper. I love her. <laughs> and she talked about how the um, during the it was another issue that happened in the housing market a few years ago, and she had to sell about 88 homes and she had to get really creative in how she was going to do this and so you know she saw an opportunity whereas the average you know real estate broker they was no i can't i can't go in in that area or that side of town and she came up with a strategy and that day and let she was actually getting ready to go out of business mm -hmm. and that day she was able to reach a million dollar mark within you know, just selling those 88, uh, 88 uh, apartment homes. Mm -hmm. And so she got really creative, and I wish we could talk
talk more about that because I love her too. Yeah. Um, but just having you know the vision and the passion, mm -hmm. especially when everybody else is running away. In the eyes of an entrepreneur, that is the time when you get in and you say, where can I create the opportunity from this, this situation? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, right, and so many people would not do leases because as agents they were above doing leases. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. I mean, you, mm -hmm. can make, you can make a ton of money and that's all people could do at that time was lease. Yeah. So what you, you know, what I did is I specialized in luxury leasing. Yeah, leasing. and you're building your client base the entire time because those people are going to get to point where they are going to buy, yeah. and they have friends that are going to buy. So yeah. it's, you know, sometimes you live with the market, and like what Courtney was saying, you you do what makes sense and figure out how you're going to make money. You know, we start in our own backyards. Absolutely, and partnership. I know that's something that you know some people think is it's like a you know an interesting thing to approach. And I know that Courtney and I a few years ago we had sort of like a strategic alliance, so sort to of speak. And she was with the company that actually uh, helped my small business, and wherever I could assist her, you know we would help each other out. But that was more of a strategic alliance. Now you guys have an actual partnership, and can you talk a little bit about the benefits of? Went into partnership, how it has helped you personally and possibly um, also professionally, and just the specific roles that you all share. Um, well, I had, you know, I'm not going into my 10th year into real estate, so um, I did a lot of it by myself for such a long time, and I knew in order to grow, I needed to, you know, I needed to partner with someone. I needed two of me. I think if any of us could clone ourselves in business, it would be perfect and we'd all be really, really wealthy. But I needed someone who had a really different way of thinking than I did, and I needed somebody who worked as hard as I did. And um, and I had actually, I had been searching for someone for probably the past three years. So it wasn't an easy find, and, and I don't think that you just do it with anyone. Um, but it was sort of love at first sight. I think that when we met, you know, it, it, it was very much like, it's like a marriage. You, yeah. you, were, you were pretty much just as involved with your, you know, your business partner as you are in, in you know, with your personal relationships. And so, um, yeah, I, I mean, that's it, sort of, that's, that's how I, you know, I decided on, on a personal level that I needed a business partner in order to grow to where I wanted to be. And plus it helps so much when you're, you know, self-employed. It's easy to um, sometimes make excuses as to why you don't get certain things done, or um, you know, spend time on things that may may not have the value proposition that you need. So having a business partner that is like-minded as the goal that you both are working towards every day, it holds you accountable. It keeps you on task. Mm -hmm. And when one person might lose their focus a little yeah. bit, the other person's there to kind of pull in the reins and say, "Hey, you know, we have X, Y, Z coming up. We need to get." Back Back and, and get focused on the game and um, so but it's the end result is you you know that you need to have that person that has the same vision as you do and as things evolve because all partnerships evolve you know people were constantly evolving and um, but that vision needs to be strong and firm absolutely and I know that the lifeblood of any business is sales mm -hmm. you know if you're not selling something then you're not making any profit so and I know that's kind of scary for most people who are wanting to jump into entrepreneurship. Um, how do you guys go about finding your clients and actually maintaining them once you once you make a sale? Um, you know, you just have to be relentless in your discipline on you know working. People have to know what you do, and you have to align yourself with people who are you're interested in helping make money and they're interested in helping you make money. You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes I, I'm a little bit of the harder person, I think, in our partnership because I'm, you know, my thinking is, if you're not making us money, you know, this, I can't spend that much time with you. And it's only because I have a family to support, we have families mm -hmm. to support. And so, you know, you, you, you just have to be relentless in, in what you decide to do in your discipline and your sales calls and the people that you're getting in front of and what you're involved in and who you're spending your time with and um, you know uh, things of that nature and it, it just has to be your main focus it's all you're thinking about constantly yeah. mm -hmm. I wake up thinking about yes. it I go to bed thinking about it um, so and how and you have to be creative in how you're going to get um, your clients as well I mean there's there's a million real estate agents out there. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people who 
or doing anything that anybody else wants to do. So you have to be creative in your mindset and thinking, how am I going to be? How am I going to get these people to choose me? Okay. Yeah, and and maintaining the client. You know, it comes down to, you know, every day, every whatever it is that you're doing, and whether it's you're at the grocery store, or you're at a meeting, you're on a sales call. You always have to keep in mind whatever image that you are trying to emulate and put out there in the Absolutely. world, you constantly have to reinforce that. And in credibility is huge, that's, mm -hmm. that's everything. And if people don't trust you to do what you say you're gonna do on the small things, they're definitely not gonna trust you on the large scale items and the things that are important to them. So we really have to, we always make sure that we're mindful of what we're doing on a daily basis, mm -hmm. whether it's 10 o'clock at night or it's, you know, 7.30 in the morning. We're constantly reinforcing the image that we're putting out there, which is we are, you know, real estate experts and we're business savvy women and we have a, a business that we are out there working for and supporting and we care about our clients and their needs. Absolutely. And you touched on you know, credibility. Mm -hmm. And for a woman who's just starting out, how would you, what kind of advice would you give in terms of how she can build credibility even though she hasn't really built a big book of mm -hmm. business? Well, if you are that woman who is just starting out on your entrepreneurial journey and you want to know how to gain credibility without having that big book of business, then you want to tune in to Fire Her TV next week for part two of our continued conversation with Courtney and Crystal. And for everyone that tuned in, here are three things I want you to do. First thing is download your Fire Her Coaching Action Guide so that you can put all of the goodness and the insight that Courtney and Crystal shared today into action. The second thing I want you to do is to comment because your insight is valuable and then share uh, this information. If it resonated with you at all, share it with the woman who may not have access to the Fire Her community just yet. And last but not least, subscribe. Subscribe so that you can get all of these Monday mentoring uh, conversations emailed to you two to three times a month so you'll never miss any information that we have to share with you to help turn your dream into reality. So thank you again for tuning in. I am Shannon Rice Maruli, and remember to always make a decision to fire her so that you can live your dreams beyond what you ever, ever imagined. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.